Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about one of the very important topics in uh, advertising and marketing, and the topic is branding. Branding is a is a very popular word. Everybody uses the the term branding. Uh, we talk about brand. Every individual talks about brand. When we go to a particular uh, shop, we we ask for a brand name. So, what is this brand? Brand is a very popular term, even among the general public, not just uh, among the marketing industry. Even among even among the general public, brand is a very popular term. And then, what is a brand then? And what is the difference between brand and a product? Let us try and find out in this particular lecture, which is uh, basically focusing on branding, process of branding, difference between brand brand and a product. And uh, types of branding, brand positioning, brand equity, and so on. Let us try and find out more through the through the slides. Uh, I'll just run through the slides uh, and then I'll uh, start explaining what is what is branding. For the first slide, we talk about the definition of uh, branding. What is branding after all? So as you see, brand is a name or a sign, symbol, or a combination of them which is intended to identify goods or services one seller from those of competitors so what is a brand brand is a is anything any name sign or symbol given to a particular product in order to differentiate bit between other products there could be a lot of uh, other products in a particular segment in the market every market will have segment for example fmcg segment automobile segment so every segment will have range of products if you if you take uh, automobile within automobile there will be uh, there will be segments within automobile or it could be there could be automobile industry within automobile you have uh, two wheeler market and you also have four wheeler market and within four wheeler again you have various segments starting from uh, entry level car to uh, suvs top end cars sedans okay uh, then uh, compact suvs compact sedan so there are various segments within automobile and within fmcg also there are various sub segments so so within in in each segment there will be range of products in each segment and every product will have its own distinctive identity its own image in the market so your product should also have a particular image your product should also be having an identity uh, which is distinctive from other market in order to identify or in order to differentiate your product from existing products so brand gives you that advantage it it, uh, it you know it gives you the advantage for the consumer to identify your product from other products when there are um, more number of products in a particular segment how does the consumer identify your product as a company you bring out a particular product how does a consumer identify your product and how does he get to know that your product is more qualitative in comparison with uh, other products so it is through a name it is through a branding it is through the branding that a consumer will identify that your product is relatively different from other products existing in in a particular market or in a particular segment a branding gives you that advantage a branding then what what is a branding it is a name it is an identity that you give to a particular product product could be anything which is which which satisfies a consumer's need or a consumer's want product will also have utility value and it will also have psychological value it will satisfy consumer both in terms of utility or in and in terms of psychological satisfaction and product could be tangible or intangible for example a tangible product is something which is which which you can touch you can feel and you can use it intangible product is something which 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 only you can experience like a service for example you can experience the services when you get into the bank banking a particular bank will offer you services when you get into a post office the post office will offer you services and when you get when you get into a travel agency the travel agency will offer you services 
So these are examples of services. But a product, a physical product, any any object, a physical object, a tangible object. What is tangible? Something which you can touch and feel through your senses. Of course, you can you can see, you can touch, and you can feel. So it could be a tangible product or it could be intangible intangible product. It could be physical product or it could be non-physical product. Non-physical in the sense, uh, services. Services will give you the experience and uh, tangible product will give you physical satisfaction, that is utility as well as psychological satisfaction. And brand, brand is a name given to these products, any product. Any product should have a name, any product should have an identity. An identity is very important for, uh, for any product because there will be a range of products in a particular segment in order to differentiate between other products and in order to have a legal advantage or legal protection from other products imitating your product, your product what you call features or product USP or product uh, name, you should have a particular identity. So that identity is given by two aspects, two things. One is brand, another, another thing is trademark. Trademark is a what you call as trademark is a uh, legally registered name or a symbol or a sign of a particular product. Whereas brand is much more than that. Brand also offers you legal production, but at the same time, brand is is much more than just what you call just offering legal production. Brand is much more than that. Brand gives you the experience of uh, exp brand gives you the the whole experience. It is the whole experience in a nutshell. It is uh, it is a name. It is a symbol. It is it is a tagline, and it is also an experience. For example, when you get into a particular coffee shop like Cafe Coffee Day which is a branded coffee shop, the, the entire experience of getting into a shop, sitting in a couch and ordering for a cup of coffee, the entire experience is branding. Okay, coffee is, is a product, coffee is a product, but Cafe Coffee Day, Cafe Coffee Day is, is a brand. So branding is that process, it is a process of building a product or process of psychologically instilling images through imageries, you instill a certain kind of identity in the minds of the consumer about, about a particular product. When consumers think of brand, uh, they, they think of your product. Ultimately, they are thinking of your product. Ultimately, the aim of branding is to, uh, is to, is to increase the sales of a particular product. So you want to, if you want to sell the product, branding is very important because branding can also add value to the product. So when consumers, uh, okay, consumers usually think about the brands and not about the products. So for example, when you want to buy a, a shoe, sports shoe, you think of brand names. You think of brand names like Nike or like Adidas or like Puma. Okay. So these are, what are these? These are brand names. When you want to have food, you think of you think of brand names like like McDonald's, like Domino's. When you want to buy clothes, you think of again you think of brand names like ready-made apparels, like jeans. If you want to buy a jean, jeans, uh, jeans, you think of brand names like Levi's, like Lee. So brand it is the, as a consumer you think of you think of brand names and not of products. Of course, you want to buy a, a pair of jeans for yourself, but you think of okay mm, uh, you think of a, you think of a brand name when you when you want to buy something so the brand is very important for any product so a product so we have, we have just you know discussed about a difference difference between product and brand a product is anything which is tangible anything which satisfies a consumers needs or needs or want but a but a brand brand is a name or a, or a symbol that is given to this particular product and branding also involves packaging it also involves promotional activities so all this put together right from thinking of a name for a particular product thinking of a tagline thinking of a name thinking of a design and thinking of how do you package your product and also thinking of how do you promote your product what kind of image you identify your product with 
and where do you set your set your product in which situation or which condition you set your product all these uh, determine the the branding strategy of a particular product branding that's why branding is also a strategy a strategy of making your product distinctive from uh, other product that means ultimately see if, if you are uh, producing a toilet soap for example take the example of uh, a toilet soap if you are producing a toilet soap a toilet soap what does it what does it do a toilet soap will give you a bath you are using a toilet soap to take bath you take any toilet soap whether it is santur whether it is dove whether it is lux whether it is synthol okay but but all these products that just now i mentioned all these products are are brand names synthol is a brand name santur is a brand name and lux is a brand name dove is a brand name liril is a brand name but all these soaps are giving you utility what is that utility you are taking you are taking bath ultimately you are cleaning yourself you are taking bath but it is also giving that is utility purpose it is serving the utility purpose but we identify these soaps in terms of images synthol synthol soap is uh, is usually identified with men dove soap dove soap is usually identified with what you call it is chemical free kind of a a uh, soap and it is identified with upper middle class or upper class women lux lux again lux is always identified with film stars or superstars celebrities and santur santur is also again santur is also identified with it is identified with married women looking young even if you are married even if you have kid even if the woman is married and if you, even if she has a kid she still looks young santur is santur has got that kind of a that kind of an image this is the identity you are trying to give to a toilet soap after all this is just a toilet soap a bathing soap that you are using for to take bath but all these products have distinctive image from one another synthol is different from dove dove is different from liril liril is different from lux so all these products are distinctly distinctively different and uh, have uh, their own identities this is what branding does this is a strategy as a company you come out with a strategy of course the product should also have that kind of ind- ingredient for example santur has a uh, sandal lux may have a rose or jasmine flavors synthol may have lemon flavor or menthol Uh, liril may have lemon so all these products also in terms of ingredient they also these product will have uh, uh, different ingredients uh, different features and different usps but along with that you also create a distinctive identity identity for each of these products in the minds of the consumer this is a psychological process wherein you create an image in the minds of the consumer so branding is that kind of a strategy where although your product could be similar to other products but your brand is not similar branding is t- distinctively it is totally different from other similar products product could be same product could be similar if not the same but uh, the the image is totally different so branding is that kind of a strategy that is used uh, by companies in order to differentiate create an identity uh in the market and also differentiate bit between other existing uh, products in the market even uh, uh, even if the product is similar to other products how do you make how do you how do you tell the consumer that your product is different from other existing products because when there are already existing products which are vying for attention which are which are competing among itself you are launching another product uh, for yourself uh, i mean in order to compete in that particular market uh, as a consumer why why do i why do uh, why should i buy your product okay you should think in terms of a consumer as a consumer why why the consumer need to buy your product you should tell the consumer how different your product from existing product when there are range of products or if if your product is similar to those products you have to okay identify or make it distinctive from other existing products in terms of branding branding is that kind of a what do you call strategic exercise that companies 
always uh, you know comes out with it is a what do you call it is a um, very important exercise exercise in in the marketing process all companies especially those who are okay those who are entering into the consumer market those who are selling products they need to have uh, you know branding exercise sometimes companies will have its own brand companies will have brand value like tata group of companies or uh, aditya birla group of companies the company itself will have a will have a branding uh, in other words company itself will have an image okay let us move on to the the next slide see historically most uh, products were uh, unbranded branding started when a craftsman put trademarks on their products to protect against inferior quality it, it started with uh, pharmaceutical companies putting brand names on their products so historically most of the products were unbranded so why branding started after all so in the post industrialized society when you you had mass production and uh, you have n number of products produced every day day in and day out so you need to sell these products how do you sell these products and you are producing uh, similar products in huge number same product in huge number for example you are producing toothpaste 100 grams of toothpaste in huge number in huge volume you have to sell these products where do you sell it you have a limited market say if you are from uh, say in unilever for example hindustan unilever or originally unilever is a company british based company so which is which is involved in fmcg market so when you when unilever start produces toothpaste for example in huge volume if we, if it is only uh, based in a particular country if it is only based in united kingdom only in england it has a limited market where do you sell this uh, the uh, the number of uh, toothpaste that you produce in huge volume if you have a limited market so you need to expand your market and also if you expand your market the the people who are uh, in the other market like in other countries okay like like for example in india or in bangladesh people who are who are in india or in bangladesh how should how do they know i how do how do they identify this particular toothpaste because it is not their it, it, this particular product doesn't come from their own country if this particular product okay it if it is a local product they would come to know but if it is from other con- other uh, country if it is from other place uh, people in uh, this part of the world we may not understand or may not identify may not be able to identify your product that's why branding gives you that kind of an advantage branding will also help you helps you helps the company in expanding the expanding its uh, market so branding gives you that kind of an advantage so historically most products were uh, unbranded because there was no need to brand the product because of uh, less production but as and when industries started coming up coming up and manufacturing industries uh, getting bigger machineries were started using in uh, in the industry uh, in the post industrial society when the products were produced in huge numbers there was a need uh, to sell these products to other markets to expand the market how do you do that you you have to market these products how you have to sell this product one of these key strategies in selling this product is branding in order to identify the products in order to make it make your product make the product distinctive from one another you had to come out with the with the name so it was the pharmaceutical companies which first uh, you know started putting names to their products in order to differentiate between similar products there's something called as generic uh, drugs so like like paracetamol tablet for example paracetamol is a generic drug and uh, there might be different companies which which produce a paracetamol tablet for fever for common fever there might be uh, different companies which might be producing uh, tablets for common cold okay or headache so how do you differentiate uh, these tablets it is through the brand names okay through the brand names you try and differentiate between one another it so it was the pharmaceutical companies so they were the first ones to you know come out with brand names later on other uh, you know it's the text it was extended to other other products as well in the other segments now 
if you see now any it is hardly any other any product which is which uh, which is unbranded almost all the products are branded even the products which are which are uh, in the unorganized sector products like uh, like fruits and vegetables uh, all this uh, you know the cereals uh, okay all these products are now branded for example rice is branded fruits apple is branded you have a brand you will you will get branded apple branded grapes branded mangoes branded rice branded wheat of course branded atta branded suji everything you will get everything in in the in 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 uh, everything which is which is branded you products which which come from unorganized sector even they are they are also branded for example these days you have a, a new trend wherein um, people are uh, uh, getting into getting into organic food so these organic food basically is a farm product from produce of farm products basically these products are also branded in a big way especially if you see in uh, places like bangalore or in mumbai or, or delhi or even in small uh, second tier cities uh not just metropolitan cities even in second tier cities you see this organic food is branded and uh, they have their own uh, exclusive shops wherein they sell uh their own uh, branded organic vegetables branded organic uh, rice uh, uh cereals fruits vegetables everything which is produced organically and which is also which is also sold in terms of you know in terms of brand name in terms of having exclusive shops in terms of having their own unique identity or that which is which is called as branding then what branding what is what does this process of branding uh this process of branding involves it involves number 1 it involves cost of packaging it involves cost of labeling it involves promotion number 1 packaging labeling promotion first thing in branding exercise is you should come out with a name to your 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 product and once you come out with a name you should think of creating a design think of creating a logo out of your whatever name that you have come out with think of creating a distinctive design for your name that you have come out with and then think of creating a uh, a distinctive package how do you package the product say for example your product could be a fairness cream and your product could be a soap product could be a moisturizer but how do you uh, package that particular product how do you put that product in into a container or uh, the shape of the container or the size of the container all these involves what you call uh, of course it is a marketing process but uh, by, uh, all these things also you know related to branding process the container shape of the container could be different from one com- one company to another company so for example ponds uh, the container uh, of ponds is different from container of nivea or garnier so each company will have its own style of packaging the product could be could be similar but the packaging packaging is different that's why you create an identity through packaging also you create an identity through name you create an identity through uh, through a symbol through a tagline and you also create an identity through through a packaging and you also create a an identity through labeling how do you label your product you come out with a name and come out with a design but how do you package it the entire product how do you package in terms of physically how do you package and also psychologically how do you package your product with what are you trying to convey to the consumer through packaging also you are trying to convey that your product is different from exclu- ex- 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 uh, different from other existing product in terms of package also what does this package does this package is nothing but it is a what you call uh, it is it creates an image in the minds of the consumer and promotion promotion is a very important exercise and in, uh, in the marketing process uh, there are four p's in the marketing product place uh, promotion and pricing 
and within promotion you have advertising and branding is part of promotional exercise so when you think of creating an identity how do you create an identity you create an identity through of course through name but also you create an identity identity through imagery a set of images it could be could be a logo or it could be a symbol a logo or symbol will give will give you an identity for example just a symbol is just just a symbol is enough to create an identity in the minds of the consumer a, a, a right symbol a just a symbol will evoke responses emotional responses from the consumer because a brand also indicates quality it also indicates uh, what you call uh, uh, pride among the consumers of owning a particular kind of a uh, brand for example if you just take the example of uh, a symbol like like nike has a very distinctive symbol uh, the right mark so just that that mark will tell you a consumer will be able to identify by just looking at that uh, symbol that it is nike if you just see the symbol that is that is enough for you to identify that this particular product uh, the name of this particular product by just looking at the the symbol you will be able to identify what is the name of the product so that the, uh, either the name or the symbol will create an identity will create an image in the minds of the consumer along with that that is a very fundamental thing and uh, what do you call uh, name and image uh, uh, name and uh, symbol and tagline is a very fundamental aspect of branding and what is the ad, uh, advanced aspect of branding that this name and symbol and uh, tagline is extended into set of images it could be still image like in the in the form of uh, print copies ad copies or or in the form of outdoor advertising or it could be set of images uh, in the form of tvcs television commercials or through jingles so with all these combination of all these advertising strategy you also create images set of images in the minds of the consumer which uh, which uh, you know creates a brand identity in the minds of the consumer so what is the advantage of uh, branding so branding as i told you in the beginning branding offers legal protection just like trademark uh, branding also offer legal protection trademark of course trademark offer legal protection uh, what is a trademark trademark is something which is uh, which is a registered brand name or a logo which gives you legal protection from uh, imitate other companies imitating your brand name brand name also does that brand name also gives you legal protection but at the same time brand name is much more than just uh, just a name or symbol it is a set of images it is a, it is an identity that you that you associate with uh, your product uh, it's an it's a set of images that you identify your your, your product with and it is also the what you call positioning of your uh, product in the in the minds of the consumer uh, the visual positioning the positioning of your product in a particular situation a particular set of what you call in a particular particular place so you position the your product in terms of images in terms of images in the minds of the consumer so branding is much more than what what uh, you know what trademark is what branding offers much more than what trademark offers trademark is purely it's a legal it is purely for trading purpose purely for legal purpose branding is not just for legal purpose it is it is much more than that it is it is more for creating identity more for okay more for uh, psychological purpose more for creating identity in the minds of the consumer because the consumer looks at the uh, looks at the brand looks, looks at uh, your brand say for example a consumer looks at a particular brand like a nike he would have an eye loyalty to a particular brand when you start buying a particular start using a particular product with a unique uh, brand name okay if you if you like it if you are satisfied with that particular product if if it is not branded if the product is not branded how do you again buy that particular product you will not be able to buy that product 
will not be able to identify in the market if it is not branded. But if you are satisfied with a particular uh, product with a brand name, with a clear cut brand name like Nike or like Adidas, or like Raymond's or like um, Reed and Taylor, or like Pepsi or like uh, Discover or like Pulsar, it is easy, easy to identify, especially in the FMCG market. If you are uh, satisfied with a uh, particular soap, okay, with the with the uh, with the brand name. Again, you will buy that particular product only. That is that is called as brand loyalty. You will have a brand loyalty. Once you are satisfied with the particular product, you identify that product with the name. And then you start buying that product again and again. Because FMCG products will have a uh, lower shelf value. It has a short shelf, shelf value. That means it gets over in a quick time, isn't it? Uh, but uh, for example, a toothpaste or a toilet soap or a detergent soap, it gets over in a very quick time. So again, you have to buy that toothpaste. Again, you have to buy the toilet soap, maybe in once in 15 days, maybe once in, in once in a month, twice in a month, once in a week. It depends upon. Mm, it depends on uh, the uh, the quantity you are using, quantity of. Uh, of the of the soap or a toothpaste that you are using so when it comes to fmcg products you are using it again and again that means you have to buy it again and again so in that case this branding helps uh, the company in creating an identity if you create an identity it is the usually consumers will will not uh, you know go to some other product they they may not ex experiment Okay, as a consumer, a consumer will not, uh, you know, experiment in when uh, when buying, uh, say, especially buying uh, soaps, detergent soaps, or uh, moisturizer, etc. Uh, what is what you call as cosmetics and uh, toiletries. When it comes to toiletries and cosmetics, uh, usually the consumers, uh, you know, may not experiment because it might harm uh, their uh, skin. Uh, or it might harm their uh, what do you call um, complexion, etc. So consumers may not experiment. In that in that case, it is always important to have an identity, distinctive identity of your product. Of course, product should also have uh, intrinsic quality. Product should also have the quality. But that's but at the same time, it should uh, also have an image wherein consumers develop a loyalty to towards your product. And branding is also very important when it comes to uh, the growth of advertising. It is through a branding exercise or what you call as a promotional exercise. When you when you promote a particular product, okay, it fuels advertising and advertising fuel advertising economy, advertising fuel uh, product selling, and that okay that uh, influences uh, the the what you call the entire advertising industry and also the entire economy in indirect way when there are when there is a competitive market when there are range of products is competed competing it is essential uh, you know you try and uh, brand your product so that it not only creates distinctive identity but it also fuels the uh, what do you call uh, promotional activities and promotional activities in turn uh, result in selling of uh, more products and expansion of the market and that will uh, you know help uh, the running of the economy in a big way what are the other advantages branding of course it gets uh, recognition because you have an when you have a brand name or when you have an identity definitely consumers start recognizing recognizing your brand in the market say when you go to a particular shopping mall when you go to a general store uh, you try and uh, you know when you want to buy something you ask for the brand name not for the product isn't it say when i want to buy the toothpaste i ask for close up or um, or a colgate or a pepsodent i don't just uh, buy any tooth toothpaste unbranded toothpaste we may not buy we ask for branded toothpaste only we 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 you know buy the brands we do not buy the products that means 
why do we do why do we do that because brands we we recognize these brands we recognize these toothpaste we recognize this uh, toilet soaps that is bathing soaps we rec recognize these detergent soaps we recognize these uh, you know mm, uh, two wheelers we recognize this four wheelers we recognize everything we recognize even when it comes to industrial products even when it comes to cement for example which is used in construction we recognize cements by by name we recognize like uh, uh, ambuja cement for example we recognize like uh, uh, lnt so we, re we, we we try and recognize we we buy the we buy the what do you call brands not the products so branding of course it will have a it will give you the recognition because it is it has an image and image the uh, imagery image uh, you know image consists of uh, name symbol tagline and also set of uh, images brand also increases business value and it, it gives uh, leverage in the market because when you have a branded product a branded product indicates quality also indicates quality because your product is a branded product because branded branding or process also involves lot of uh, cost it is it is not uh, you know cost free activity it is a cost it is not a cost effective activity it is expensive activity branding process itself is an ex expensive activity wherein it il involves you know creating a design which involves money it involves packaging which involves money it which it involves uh, uh, creating images uh, promotional activity, multimedia promotional activities, multimedia like uh, television, out of home, jingle, print, etc., which involves huge money. So, branding process itself, and again, you have to repeat it again and again, okay, in the outdoor or in television or in, in the radio or in social media. You have to repeat it, you have to do it again and again. All these things involves money. So in that sense, branding is a very expensive activity. Okay, because it is expensive activities, it will create it, it will create an identity because of I mean because you do all this uh, the process a particular product goes through all this product when it is branded. Uh, it definitely it will have an identity in the market, and that identity, that distinctive identity, will give leverage in the market which will give advantage to the company to your uh, to to towards uh, you know your product because when you when you when you want to buy a certain uh, kind of a product when you want to buy say for example a sports shoes you think of nike you think of adidas you think of puma when you want to buy formal shoe you think of red tape okay you think of uh, maybe metro or uh, you think of Bata. So these are some of the brand names immediately crops up in your mind because why? Why does it uh, happen? Because you have seen it somewhere. You have seen it in TV, on TV. You have uh, you have heard about it. You have seen it uh, in, in outdoors, and uh, you have seen it in the general store, in the, in the what do you call in the um, retail stores, in the shopping malls. You have seen it everywhere in the out outdoor holdings. In billboards, you've seen it because these images are everywhere. These images, all these images, are what is called as branding. So when when a particular brand uh, as an as a, a unique identity, it will definitely give leverage to the company in the market, and it also creates trust within the market because see a particular brand also indicates quality. Usually, a branding also indicates quality up uh, and when when it is a qualitative product it definitely it will it will create trust in the minds of the consumer okay, consumer perceives that your product is a very qualitative product once consumer gets that mindset gets gets that idea about your product that your product is a very qualitative product then the consumer will have a brand loyalty. He will trust your product. Okay, when it comes to okay, when when by just uh, looking at your brand name, by looking at uh, uh, the name of name of your product, 
consumer will trust your product because it is a he will he will be sure that it is a qualitative product because the, the branding exercise involves not just uh, you know the process of and promotion but also it also indicates quality the intrinsic quality of the product brand also reflect the intrinsic quality of the product so that intrinsic quality the utility that uh, brand offers or what you call as equity that a brand offers which is called as brand equity that will create trust in the minds of the consumer and branding has that that advantage over unbranded products uh, okay. now we'll try and talk about types of uh, branding that companies uh, you know uh, employ one is family branding the other one is individual branding what is family branding family branding is when a company produces in a particular segment a range of products all these when all these products put together if, if it is branded together as a as a, as a you know range of products produced by a particular company company in its various in its various activities promotional activities then it is called as family branding for example you take the example of amul or nandini when you see the television commercials of amul or nandini earlier commercials so nandini for example or amul so the the television commercial the tvc uh, usually feature range of product that is produced by amul range of dairy products ice cream chocolates uh, cheese uh, then uh, yogurt that is curd uh, all these products put together they advertise at once they promote at once okay not individually not separately but they promote together say for example amul produces ice creams it also produces chocolates it also produces uh, yogurt it also produces uh, hmm, cheese okay but these four products they are not advertised separately but they are advertised together if it if it is advertised together or if it is promoted together in the words if it is promoted together then it it could be called as family branding the advantage of family branding is uh, it is cost effective because uh, if you if you want to uh, you know do a carry out promotional activity for each and every product that you are producing then uh, obviously uh, the cost will go up but if you are combining if you are combining all these products together then the cost will definitely cost will come down it is cost effective it's a cost effective exercise and it also reduces launch cost see if you are uh, launching a new product uh, as a company for launching you have to have a what you call multi pronged approach wherein you are using all possible uh, media network that you that you may have like tv uh, radio print magazine out of home then digital media all possible media platforms you are using that is called as multimedia campaign you are doing you are trying to come out uh strategize with multimedia campaign if you are launching a new product if you have a range of if you have say 5 uh, 6 products in your portfolio in your, in your company portfolio if you are launching all these uh, products individually so for each uh, product launch you may have to spend a lot of money whatever amount you spend whatever budget you are spending on each product launch you you may have to spend it for other products as well if it, if you are going for individual branding but if you are going for family branding this product launch of individual products may not be you know it, it will not be there because you are branding together so the product cost if you have five products in your portfolio so what the what the cost in the cost of one one product launch you, you can manage other products as well so in that sense it reduces product launch cost also and also of course promotional expenses because promotional activities that is advertising activities you have to do on a regular basis uh, say if you are uh, you know producing a tvc production cost and also uh, 
uh, you, you have to air the, these uh, TVCs on uh, uh, various TV channels as per media planning. And it doesn't end after you air one once, whatever TVC you are producing, whatever TVC related to your product. It doesn't end there. You, this advertising usually repeated every now and then, every, every day or maybe five, six time, times in a day or maybe 20 times in a day and every day for so and so duration. So usually that's why we call it as a campaign planning. That's why we can call it as campaign, advertising campaign. So it is not just advertising, it is, an adver it is, a, it is a campaign. You need to have a proper plan. You need to identify the set of TV channels, set of radio stations, and a set of places where these hoardings are placed. When it comes to TV channel, which channel you are trying to advertise, you are, you are identifying, and how many times you are advertising in a day, and how many days your campaign runs. So it involves a lot of costs. That means you are repeating it again and again on a continuous basis. If you imagine if you are uh, doing that for each and every product, the cost will definitely go up. So if it is, if it has to be cost effective, if you're going for family branding, definitely it is cost effective. But there is one disadvantage wherein uh, if your product, if one product fails in, uh, in, uh, in, in your portfolio, it may rub off to other products which might be uh, successful, but uh, when it comes to individual branding, even if one brand, one product fails, even if one product fails, uh, it will it may not have any influence over other products. Other products may still have uh, still be uh, successful. Only one product fails. For example, see, uh, there was a product uh, called as uh, uh, Baleno, Marti Baleno, uh, not the new one, the earlier uh, Marti Baleno. When it was launched first, uh, it was a failure. But Maruti Suzuki uh, Automobile is a very successful company. All the all the what you call uh, products uh, or brands in uh, Maruti Suzuki portfolio, they are very successful. Like it could be Maruti 800, Alto, Esteem, Swift, Swift Desire. But Maruti Baleno was was a, was not so successful comparatively in comparison with other brands when it was uh, launched earlier but uh, that did not affect the sales of other brands sales of say for example swift swift was uh, you know it was a leading uh, uh, brand even then it was in fact was highest selling brand during that time uh, in the in that particular segment uh, it did not affect the business of uh, swift or a swift desire or for that matter alto but uh, balena was a failure then but of course it was uh, redesigned and relaunched later and now it is uh, doing well in the market that means if you are branding individually even if an uh, individual brand fails uh, it doesn't affect other uh, brands in, in in your portfolio but if you are branding together like a family brand if you are branding uh, like a family product or like a family brand then one product if one product fails it might affect other products also so that is one of the uh, advantages of individual branding and also disadvantage of uh, family branding these days companies of course companies uh, they they brand uh, all the products individually even uh, i just mentioned uh, the example of uh, amul earlier but Amul is also going for uh, individual branding these days. Uh, for ice cream, they have their uh, different uh, ad campaign. For uh, chocolate, a different ad campaign. Uh, for other dairy, cheese, dairy products, they have a different campaign. So uh, they are also getting into individual branding. So individual companies, most of the companies, almost all the companies these days, they go for individual branding. It is uh, difficult uh, right away to identify whether this uh, any any new brand you know which which uh, to which company it belongs to a new product may be may may have been launched but it is difficult to identify in, uh, instantaneously but uh, this product may be may belong to a very uh, 
uh, existing companies only okay companies uh, every now and then they launch uh, products uh, uh, if it is individually branded each product will have its own advantage and companies also create similar products in uh, uh, in a particular segment for example a, a company like unilever or a company like uh, like uh, godrej they will create similar product that means you create for example there is a, a soap called as lux okay lux have very uh, many variants uh, in in its sports portfolio lux international or lux uh, jasmine lux rose there, is, there are various flavors that means you are creating similar products in the market wherein you are product only competing with your product you are the leader and uh, you are the number one uh, selling brand and what is the number two selling brand again the number two selling brand also belongs to you again one more thing so unilever you know has uh, you know uh when it comes to fmcg unilever you know ha- does this strategy especially soap manufacturers uh, you know they you know they come out with strategy wherein your products are competing with your products okay products in your portfolio competing with each other like unilever for example it has lux it also has dove okay so they are competing with each other and they are also have they also have a different distinctive identity and they are also competing with each other so in that sense a, a particular product a particular company will make create similar uh, products uh, in order to make them compete with each other even if uh, one com- one product gains it is your gain even if uh, you know one product loses it is not a loss for you it, that kind of a strategy company is adopting so company is also creating similar brands and some companies are also you know coming out with a strategy like extension of brand like if you are uh, doing well in one segment you you carry the same brand name to an other segment also for example uh, nirma toilet soap nirma a very popular detergent uh, powder that, uh, uh, that that was used uh, right from 1980s till date and uh, because of the success uh, of that uh, uh, detergent uh, order the nirma has also launched an uh, toilet soap from detergent segment to bathing soap so you have uh, you know companies uh, uh, you know, extending their uh, okay market or extending the brand value from one from one segment to another segment this is uh, another uh, kind of a strategy that companies are using uh, these days dear students uh, we have uh, you know talked about uh, discussed about uh, branding in this particular class various uh, 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 the aspects of branding the definition of branding how, how different brand uh, branding is from uh, uh, product uh, and what is the process of branding what is the strategy of branding why branding is important for companies and uh, what are the branding strategies that is adopted by companies and what are the different types of branding so we have discussed about all these things and um, maybe in uh, another class we might talk about uh, other important aspects of branding like brand positioning and brand equity thank you